Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you and I hope you had a very nice day. So uh, before we move on, remember that we need to finish the platform by next Sunday. So that is very important. And also remember that uh, you will be receiving the Insta Forbes survey this week. So that is something that we always do on the last class. So please remember that one. The Insta Forbes survey, we will do it together on the last class. As usual, we're going to check about the platform. So this is the class of tonight and this is the question for tonight and uh, you will find here that the homework we should be doing tonight so that will be it and we're going to check the attendance of course okay let me just check something okay very well, so let's check the attendance so we can move on. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Russian teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Díaz. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lagos. Present teacher. Very good. Perfect. So we will start the class of tonight. And uh, I have a question for you. So do you believe kids learn different than adults? What do you think? Kids learn? Different than adults. Uh, yes, of course, because uh, kids have curiosity, kids has um well depending of the age uh, kids have uh, more uh, mirror neurons than adults and the mirror neurons may the the kids that learn imitating copying of the what they see do the adult the adults uh, uh, still remain in some uh, mirror neurons but uh, uh, in uh, uh, a few quantity, and then the 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 adults learn more by association. They need to associate the actual knowledge with the future knowledge. They need to get a point of support to add new knowledge, and uh, uh, by making uh, connections, making uh, uh, relating neurons, they 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 can learn new things and uh, definitely the, the kids learn different from, from adults okay very good perfect thank you so and uh, what uh, do you think we need to do so whenever we want to teach adults so they really learn what can we do i mean 
what are the challenges that we have by teaching adults? Okay, the, the, the challenge are uh, first, first of all, is motivate them. This, this is the, this is the, the, the first uh, uh, objective in, learning, in teaching adults. Uh, there are a, a, a proverb, I don't know, it's uh, from, from like, uh, Orient cultures, but uh, West uh, East culture is the name, East cultures, that uh, they say that uh, the only way that a man or a woman, a person, learn is that they want to do. They want to learn. This is the only way. And nobody can teach if the person doesn't want to learn. And they say always that, uh, uh, also that, they say also that when the, when the students, when the people is ready, the teacher will appear. When the, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear because if they want to learn, they learn. They learn, they look in, in, in social media, they look in YouTube, they look for a person who knows. And uh, first thing is to motivate, to motivate them, uh, to inspire them that they want to learn. Hey, very good. So that is very, very interesting. Yeah, the motivation is very important for adults, right? Kids are kind of easier. They are curious by nature, as you say. Uh, but adults, we need something that motivates, that inspires us to, so we can learn. Very good. Any other challenges that we can have whenever we want to teach adults? Teacher, first of all, are, are you okay? I can hear you are getting caught. Oh, I'm very sick, very sick. But I'm very happy to be here, you know, Don't worry. <laughs> okay. And, and well, about about auto train learning, I think um, it's much much more easier to to teach kids, even though these days uh, there there are there are not just neurotypical kids. Uh, you got today uh, kids that learn from just reading and they memorize what they read or like 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 my son that he memorizes what he listens for example and and there are many different kinds of of, 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 of of kids and their learning is, is very different and the past days, our generation, for example, is very typical, but that doesn't happen anymore. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I have a friend that he went to a seminar in the U.S. and he went to school actually for kids that are considered geniuses. And it was very interesting. He says that uh, he was very curious about what was happening there so he entered there and when he, uh, he was there moving on he saw that i mean in the classes the kids they were playing with the teachers that was the class like playing he says mm -hmm. is that a class and at the end um, they they stopped in the class and well the teacher was uh, like throwing like a little disc you know and the other kid was uh, getting the this and throwing back at him but then in the uh, in the middle of that one the teacher said what is the speed of this disc if I send it like this and the kid started to say oh depending on the inclination and things so that was a very good experience so mm -hmm. it was interesting because well whenever you want to teach it doesn't matter if you are going to teach kids and adults you need to to understand right so you need to understand how you can approach with them. Of course, with kids it's different because I mean, if you play, if you do something interesting, they will be there. With adults it's a little bit different, but if you have a very good approach, uh, of course they're going to learn. Yes, and adults, uh, it's harder for us to uh, get used to, to, uh, to technologic tools, but kids is so easy for them. 
that is true. So they, for them, it's very easy to understand to, to, to start playing with that one, right? Good. What other challenges do we have when we teach adults, my friends? No more. Okay, so let's start reading about that one. That's that is the class of tonight. Uh, educating adults, how to teach adult learners. I found a lot of resources about that one. Very interesting. All of those were different. So I brought three different articles. I hope we have the time for us to read and learn about that one and check uh, because I mean, of course, we we uh, almost always we are with adults, we teach or we learn, right, uh, with adults. So teaching adult learners is a very different experience to teaching younger learners. We explore some techniques for teaching adult learners and discuss how to motivate them. So motivation, again, is one of the most important parts of this process, okay? So the introduction is going to be for uh, David. Okay. With COVID-19, investigating the great resignation of 2021 in online education becoming more prominent. There are more reasons for adults to pursue education, whether it's to upskill for a new career or to feed their learning around their family lives. Education can be a fantastic tool for today's adults. If you are a teacher looking to find out more about the world of educating adults, this article will provide some insights. We will explore some adult learning strategies and share some tips for motivating adult learners. Okay, what do you get on that one? Okay, definitely uh, COVID-19 uh, changed everything. Uh, uh, and the example is uh, uh, we are now in this mo mode of, of teaching, in this way of teaching, because in, in different situations, we need to attend a, a building, a, a classroom, and uh, uh, it's uh, comfortable for, for all of us uh, because we can uh, use this, this, this time <laughs> in, in normal, uh, moments in normal time, we can use uh, these this hours for learning because uh, there are no transportation, maybe public transportation, and there are uh, limitations. And uh, a new uh, uh, field, a new area, a new space uh, uh, open in the past, and, and uh, there are room, there are opportunities. For them, even though the, the universities are opening more and more and more virtual careers, virtual uh, subjects, virtual techniques, uh, is a uh, opening. And uh, uh, definitely we need to learn if uh, we are teaching or if we are learning too, we need to learn how adults learn, it is important. Very good, interesting. So yes, I mean, even if you don't like uh, these new ways of of going to class or learning or teaching, I mean, we need to learn, right? So yes. it's something that probably in the future is going to help us. I mean, we don't know if we are going to teach somebody in the future. So it's a very this good thing. Don't don't change anymore. This is stay with us. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, it's going to stay. I mean, I believe that in the US, yeah, it was kind of popular in the past not that popular of course now i mean it's a hit and in countries like el salvador i mean in the past it was very difficult i mean when they say you are going to have a training online it's like oh, that's kind of boring or i need to do some things that i don't like or i don't have the time for that one i prefer to go in person but nowadays that is that is very common right good so what is an adult learner, uh, Heidi? What is an adult learner? First, let's discuss what, what we mean when we say adult learner. Adult learners often refer to as major learners, 
Are adults receiving education? Education. This could be in the form of college, university, workplace training, or any other means of learning of learning. Learners are generally considered adults if they are over the age of 25. Many adult learners are those who have taken a break from education. They could be returning to finish a degree or be studying to gain a new qualification. With this in mind, we should think about where adult learners' priorities and goals might lie. Good. What do you get on this one? I thought uh, talking about adult learners, it would be older, older guys, but it's from 25. So for me, it's not that, that big, right? Yeah, it's not that big. I mean, if we think about that one, that age, I mean, it's going to be almost everybody that is working right now, right? Just a few people that are below that. Uh, other than that, the majority of people that are working in a company, they are other learners. Exactly. So, and then, uh, yeah, the last part is kind of interesting. We should think about where other learners priorities and goals may lie. So again, it's important to understand them, right? To check what motivates them so we can start from there. Mm -hmm. So I was more thinking, sorry, I was more thinking on, 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 the, on the strategies for adult learners more than the motivation. Definitely. So that is true. I mean, sometimes it's good to uh, know the motivation, but uh, well, we cannot go one by one, right? So we need to have a strategy so we can have everybody in a group uh, like getting what they need to know. So getting the training. Is it hard for you teaching um, various uh, adult learners from different ages? Because well, different ages in this group, right? Yeah, we have, I mean, all, all the time, we have different kind of people, different ages, different approaches, different ways. And, it, you know, it's not difficult because I try to do, I, I believe that what you need to do is to, to see everything, everybody as a group, to try to understand some people, for example, they ask me to do something different or to, um, I mean, to adapt myself. And I try to do it. I try to adapt. Sometimes it's not possible here in these classes because, I mean, instead for have some some rules, right? So, for example, I would like to speak about some other things that might be interesting, but we are here to to learn about English for work. Sometimes I do it. I go from the other side, but um, I don't believe there are difficult learners. Maybe the main problem in English classes actually is that we have different levels. And uh, the main problem is that you cannot go very fast because there are learners or there are people that they have a, a more basic level. And there are other people that they are very advanced and that might be boring if I go too slow. So that is something that I need to play with. Maybe that is the most difficult in the English classes at least. But other than that, I mean, the most of the people are here because they really want to learn English, maybe because of many reasons, maybe if they don't like it. So they they actually have a motivation. They are here because they really want to, even when it's difficult. So, um, and uh, the classes are very open. So it's a kind of a good thing. It's not big difficult. I mean, at least for me, I don't believe it's a big deal. Okay. Okay, good. So the next one says adult learning principles. Erwin, could you please help me reading this? Not possible. Let's see. Teacher, teacher, so, oh, okay. Teacher, okay, go sorry, ahead. Please. I'm in the form. Okay, sorry, teacher. Uh, okay. Are you, <clears throat> oh, go ahead. Okay. I will learning principles. Will all patient leaders make you a similar training? Situation about, about will be a different experience for teaching younger people. The principle of, of adult teaching system from the adult learning theory, which will be explored shortly. The principles are about learning and learn based under this condition. 
when the reconditional can be self-directed, they need to be somewhat involved in the planning of their education. <clears throat> then the lesson plans incorporate background, knowledge, and experience when the learning is offered the active manner rather than possible, than possible. When <clears throat> learning is relevant to the current circumstance and can be applied to some aspect of their life. Okay, what do you get on that one? Um, this one I think that's a technique for to try to learn uh, with the adults. For me, it's a technique, technique teacher. For how can you uh, teach uh, the other person with the adult? Uh, but in the adults, can you have a different generation? For example, the baby boomers are different, uh, like X generation, for example. And if you are teaching about the, the, the millennium, it will be a different. But you can uh, to try to understand uh, what kind we we need your adults uh, out of when you have a teach for some people. Okay, so yeah, I mean there are a lot of strategies, methodologies, and things in that one. Uh, but it's a good thing that start uh, with principles. I mean. When for adults, I mean, when their educations can be self-directed, they need to be somewhat involved. So huh? that is, uh, sorry, uh, that is something that is true. They, adults, we want to active participate in, if it's possible in the planning, right? But if it's not possible, at least in some parts of the process. When the lesson plans incorporate background knowledge and experiences, that is something that adults really like when uh, the learning is offered in an active manner rather than passive. That is very, very important. I mean, you have to go to this training, it's not good, right? But if they come and ask you, what do you need? And you say, I need this, I want to learn this. Okay, I'm gonna give you. So they're happier, right? They move on. And when the learning is relevant to the current circumstances, definitely. When you are in a job and you don't understand some things, and the boss says, yeah, you are going to go to seminar to learn about this one. Oh, they're happy. So these are like general principles, of course, there are more. The next one says adult learning theory. So that one is going to be for Jessica Gennari. Not possible, okay? Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. Uh, adult learning theory. So what is the adult learning theory? The adult learning theory or andra andragogy and ragogy is the concept of how adults learn. The theory was developed by Malcolm Knowles in 1968. And it highlights how adult learners differ from younger learners. According to the adult learning theory, adults differ from children because adults need to understand why learning is beneficial. The main points of the theory are that adult learners are self-directed and expect to take responsibility for decisions. Adult learners tend to be seeking education for their needs and goals. The key difference with younger learners is that the later are often learning to, to parent or teacher involvement. Because of this key difference, you will need to approach adult learners differently from how you would with you don't learn young learners. Good. So what do you get in this one? Uh, hmm. Maybe the, the, that I under, understand reading is uh, we we the, the adults uh, learn different than the, the younger or, or kids maybe yeah. uh, it's because maybe you have uh, you think before before doing for example before before learning or what what uh, what what is the, your motivation, the, you have to reach your goals, your objectives, and that is because you you learn different. You you learn 
that maybe the UD is beneficial for you. Maybe in the children or the young, the younger, uh, is is maybe influenced by a, an adult or a teacher or maybe a mentor, uh, and the mentor, uh, the mentor said what what are the maybe the, the things that you have to learn, what is better for you, an adult they decide by yourself. Uh, what is uh, the best for you? Very good. So that is andragogy, right? So yeah, it's totally different. I mean, kids, you bring them, you teach something. Uh, maybe they ask why this is happening, but they don't ask themselves, why do I need to learn this? Maybe at a certain point, yes, yeah, sometimes we do it. But uh, for adults, I need, you need to be convinced that this is going to be beneficial for you. Other than that, maybe, yes, you can go to any um, training, but maybe you are not going to learn um, the same way as if you were motivated on that one. Okay, characteristics of a adult learner. Let's check into that one. Let's see Dora Elizabeth. Characteristic of adult learners. Now, does we know the basic Principles of teaching adult learning. Let's look at what characteristics we can expect to see. Characteristics. 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 Characteristic. Good. Keep these characteristics characteristic in mind when construction your lesson plans and content. We can more easily create effective education resource when we know exactly who will be teaching. Okay, very good. So what do you get on that one? Um, when we need to, to teach uh, adults, I consider a uh, uh, consider the the characteristics car, characteristics of a uh, 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 motivation why the adult the adult learns. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So if we understand who is going to be the audience is going to be easier. And mm -hmm. well, in this case, definitely, uh, maybe it's very rare that we're going to have the chance to train or to teach a kid. Uh, mm -hmm. Only if you have kids, of course, at home, then it's a different thing. But other than that, at work or anything like that, uh, it's going to be adults, the ones that we're going to be teaching to. So let's check the characteristics. The first two characteristics as for Ileana Giselle. Not possible. So lay my bone. Not possible either. Let's see, uh, Heidi. No, uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, are all learners have life experience? That and the next one, please, both. Okay, all oh. learners have life experience. It's safe to assume that major learners will, unlike younger students, bring with them a wealth of life experience. Other learners might have pursued a career before studying again, traveled the world, or even raised a family. That is great as it means that our learners will have a lot of varied knowledge to learn, to share. Our learners are driven to achieve their goals. Most older learners will be pursuing education out of choice, whether it's to learn skills for a new career or just try something new. Chances are that they have made an active decision to pursue education. When teaching other learners, you might find that they are more driven to get the most 
out of their learning. Okay, what do you get on this one? For me, it means that really maybe adults makes a, um, a bigger effort to to learn because they are they are more compromised maybe with themselves because that they already is, know what they want. Yeah, actually, you say something very important. They are committed to themselves. They know what they want. They want what they want to achieve. What are their goals? So whenever that happens, yeah, definitely they are going to be more committed. Right? It's going to be easier uh, for for them to actually go and get training and then of course pay attention and things that will. okay good so and yes they uh since they have life experience already whenever you relate the teaching or the training with those life experiences of course they, that is going to help okay the last one is going to be for let's see marcus okay um, um, adult learners uh, are driving to achieve their goals. Uh, most older learners will be, it is, it is that correct? Well, actually, it's going to be the last one. Adults learners are adult independent. Learners are, yeah. Adult learners are, I'm thinking, ah, no, adults, sorry, adult learners are independent. Yeah, that's one. Since adult learners come from all worlds, of life, you'll find that they are far more independent than younger learners. Adult learners often know what goals they need to achieve and can hone in on those independently. It, this means that they often like making their own decisions regarding their learning. Okay, what do you get on that one? Okay. Um, okay. Um, I understand that <clears throat> when we are teaching, uh, yeah, when we are uh, yeah, teaching to other learners, uh, we have to understand that. Um, they are independent. Uh, they have a, a experience on any fields and from a lot of, of uh, experience they have lived. So they can make their own decision no matter uh, what they learn. So uh, it's not like the younger learner they are more uh, dependent from from the learning so it's important to to take them that in consideration that they can flow their imag imagination they can be more independent okay very good so definitely i mean yeah we are independent adults right so uh, you uh since you are related with the goals that you want to achieve, then you can move on. You can um, decide what is going to be the next step in the in your path, in your career path. So, and then we have adult learning styles and techniques. This one is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. Adult learning styles and techniques. With the characteristics of adult learners and principles of adult learning introduced, let's think about some useful techniques for adult, adult learners. Uh, encouraging involvement, involvement, in, uh, involvement. <laughs> involvement, in, yeah. Okay, and independence. This approach encouraged individuals to become more involved in their learning. Since other learners prefer to be involved in their education, you should let them make decisions and listen to their input. Ask for feedback from other learners and offer more freedom with lessons, plans, and activities. You can even allow for self-guided study if this suits the needs of your learners more. Good, what do you get on that one? 
Uh, yeah, totally agree that once you are involved in your education, you feel like uh, you are uh, adding something else. Uh, like, um, and also, I think, I think maybe as an, an adult, we do this. I see it in this way, like uh, part of the learning, like if you repeat or you do instead of just listening, if you do the process, you realize you make physically the things or you repeat, you read uh, aloud. Uh, the brain is like it gets easier and faster what you are learning. That is what I think. Maybe that is why they are recommending that being involved in our education is a good technique. Okay, very good. So, yeah, actually, it's very interesting because, I mean, since we know that uh, because adults are independent and also they know what they want to achieve, it's a very good idea to get them involved at a certain mm -hmm. point, of course, not a total, uh, mm -hmm. about their learning and provide the freedom of some uh, some activities or some things that is going to happen then in the, uh, in the learning and process. So that is a very good thing. Good, active learning, that is going to be for Jarvin, Isaac. Not possible, Roxana Asensio. Okay. <clears throat> active learning, one of the principles that we outlined, out, outlined, is correct? Yeah, outlined outline thank you was to provide educa educational materials in a interactive and problems based manner adults learning is more effective when learners solve problems and add tasks using a resume <coughs> tasks Oriental educational tools will be more effective than a standard passive teaching methods when teaching adults learner. Try to involve things like quizzes, interactive, interactive, interactive activities, and discussions to involve the learners with some creative, creative uh, thinking you can make sure that all learners are engaged and have a chance, chance to get involved. If you are interested in furthering for for huh? for you, your knowledge it regards to increasing engagement for adults learner. Check out or engaging adults learner with active learner curves. Okay, so what do you get in this part? Uh, well, um, when you are uh, referring to uh, adults learner, uh, you need to uh, include um, maybe uh, interactive activities, to try to get more interest into from from them, uh, because uh, imagine uh, when you are uh, has a has a presenter, for example, if you if you are giving an um, explanation and all the explanation is with text or a um, graphic or something like that, maybe uh, the audience will lose the interest and imagine when you are um, working with adults maybe it's more difficult because when that person tried to um, start again with um, some studies uh, I imagine that they looking for um, activities and 
they are looking for interesting activities um, because I think that that person was were a study ten years ago, maybe, and it's complex to try to uh, start again. It's, that's why it's important to try to include uh, interactive activities um, in the the topic and try to try to uh, transmit in different way the information. Uh, also, it's important to try to evaluate uh, how they they can um, how they are understanding. So you can uh, add quizzes or some activities to to get information about that. So very good. So that is it. I mean, you need to do some interactive things, right? It's not just one person speaking in front of a lot of people. Everybody has to participate. And even when it's difficult, sometimes you need to bring them down. And problem-based is something that I really like. For example, here in the English class, sometimes I ask you, right, what would you do? Uh, what is the problem with this? What are the challenges with this? So you think about it and then you provide your opinion or a solution for that one. So that is also that also motivates people because they have to think by themselves and provide a solution. So very good. Next one says drawing on their life experience. Uh, let's see. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa. Not possible. Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Not possible. Yeah. Juan Miguel Bram here. Hey, teacher. Hello. Okay. Drawing, drawing on their life experience. We can utilize the life experience that we mentioned earlier to amplify the learning potential for adults. You could use real scenarios as examples during lessons and utilize the knowledge of your learners where, where possible. Use open-ended questions and draw on their own experiences to utilize, utilize yeah, their knowledge. Hey, what do you get about? Huh? Oh. Um, um, let's see. Um, I love the topic. It's about how to teach uh, um, adult, but I don't know because I'm, I'm entering the, the, the class right now. I don't know if it it refers to elderly people, teacher. It's not elderly, but adults. Uh, and we also, when we were starting reading about this article, uh, we learned that adult uh, is 25 years and older than that one. So, and now we're speaking about uh, learning styles and techniques. So, and you were reading about driving on their life experience. Okay, so in this case, for me, it's um, to, um, how to, how to say this, in order to teach uh, um, or to have a, a, a very good technique or a, be, a very good result, uh, um, I mean, um, you could use real, yeah, re like uh, real situations or situations that are much that that are more that are much, uh, um, like uh, parecidos, uh, related to or similar, uh, related or similar to a. Uh, the real situations that uh, you can 
you can you can confront or you can uh, have in, in some situation, yeah, or obviously in your work, yeah, in order to uh, all the knowledge or all the, the, the things that you are teaching and obviously they are learning could be uh, applied uh, as a practical situation in this, um, in this scenario, yeah in order to to, um, to have uh, a scenario that is kind of exactly about your, your reality, yeah. Uh, for example, if you are teaching some, uh, something related to networks and connections and something like this, uh, try to establish uh, like a lab classroom, yeah, where uh, you can uh, teach and obviously they can learn about what can they do in order to uh, reorganize, uh, for example, uh, your computers in order to, or, or reorganize your uh, devices, yeah, in order to, um, get more um, um, like se segmentado. I don't know how to say this in English. Segmentado, segmented? Segmented, you can say segmented. Okay. In order to segment the, the devices and equipments that are related uh, among, among them and um, And they can apply these situations, uh, this, uh, this scenario, this laboratory, yeah, in in their uh, in their network, in their um, working environment, yeah, in order to to um, to solidify, no, solidificar, no sé. Uh, Solidify. Their, uh, their, their knowledge, yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, so I, I think. Uh -huh. Oh, good, good. So yes, um, when we're teaching adults, remember that they have a life experience already, right? They have traveled, they have family, they have kids. So if you link that to a life experience situation, any training is going to be more successful, right? So also... As you remember, uh, whenever we were learning about presenting, that was something, right? Tell about uh, a story about something. And that is about relating this to life experience that adults might have. So it's a very good thing. Okay, the other one says taking a varied approach. Uh, Fernando Gonzalez. Not possible. Not I'm having okay. dinner. Give me a minute, please. Of course, of course. Later, I will participate. Okay. Okay. Taking a varied approach. Yeah, please. Okay. Those teaching adult learners should be willing to use a, a variety of teaching approach. Since every adult is different, you should use a range of learning approaches suited to the needs of your learners. Lesson content can be adapted to meet the needs of individual learners, and new resources can be brought in to accommodate all learners. On the topic of accommodating the needs of all learners, it's important to consider any additional help that learners may need. All learners may be neurodivergent and require additional consideration in terms of learning eyes and resources. You'll need to consider this when creating lesson plan and course content. 
to learn more about creating an inclusive learning environment, check out our education for all disability, diversity, and inclusion course. Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, we talk we talk about we talk about training, right? Yeah, training. Training, uh, training for adults by now. Training for adults, okay. So when you when you get a training, you you need to accommodate the the content for for the for the the type of the group that that you have to to impart the, the training. Uh, in in this case it's adult, but it's the same for other groups like children or youngs. Um consider adults, well, sometimes it's, it's more it's easier than, than children because people are people are um big now. Oh, oh, right. People are old and they understand better and they behavior are better, but sometimes um uh, uh, also depending of the of the level of education that that people have. So you can find the, the way to give an appropriate content according to the world, according to their, their education, according to their, or not maybe their races, their race or their ethnicity. Ethnicity. Ethnicity, thank you. Or their ethnicity. Uh, in you know in very in many aspects you you need to you need to accommodate your content that's I understand okay very good so and you are so right I mean this this specific point uh, is something that we need to consider it doesn't matter the age of the of the people that are learning and yeah we need to um, have different approaches sometimes it's difficult. I mean, because you don't know exactly what kind of people you are going to have there. So you create a lesson plan, but it's also possible that on the go, whenever you are teaching already, you can you can change some things. Uh, so every everything works better, right? So yeah, you can create a, uh, a lesson plan that is going to be according to, I mean, a variety of people, but you can always change things on the go. Okay, so the next part is going to be for Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Not possible, okay? So let me then just check. Okay, let's start then with David Samuel. Okay. Motivating adult learners. One of the difference you may notice when educating adults as opposed to children is the difference in attention span. Your ability to focus decreases with age. So you may have to make a more conscious effort to engage adult learners by tailoring lessons to your learners and making an effort to motivate them to, to be able to engage your learners. Relating lessons contend to your learners. Since other learners tend to learn better when education immediately benefits them, you should highlight how the content relates to them. Others tend to be seeking out a skill or qualification that will have an immediate impact, impact on, on their lives. You can cater to this by using real world samples and specifying how this new skill will have a direct impact on the learners. Okay, what do you get on this one? Yes, I think uh, uh, maybe the problem is, but uh, uh, by the experience of uh, the adults have, there are more uh, ideas in their mind. And when they listen a specific world or specific situations, they might go out uh, with that, that situation then, and uh, they stop putting attention and start thinking 
in another condition or in another situation. There is the, the reason that we need to, to ask uh, the adult learners to come back. Uh, we need to pay attention. Uh, we need to pay attention to their attention or that the signals, that the signals that they are giving us, if they are with us or they are in in other situation, in other thinking, uh, we need to to uh, make a pauses or make a, sometimes silences uh, to to know if they are learning, if they are in the in the situation, and, and uh, as we seen in previous uh, lessons. Uh, we need to involve them, involve them in, in, in something that right you can or... Deriving meaningful insights from data is fast becoming the most needed skill in the business world. Uh, okay. Uh, you need to, to, to involve them, to, to raise their hands, to, to do something that uh, they try them to back to the, to the, to the lesson. And the other thing is that uh, it is important, even though with the young students, you need to relate the content you are teaching with the real life. It's just, it is important. It's important for a teenagers, students, and it's more important for adults. They need to know that that kind of learning will help them to, to the, their world, to their life, or in the future. They, they need to to be conscious about what is the benefit of that learning. If they uh, realize that it is important for their job, for their life, they try to stay and they try to put more attention. It is important. Very good, so that is true. I mean, if you bring something like from the real life and they see how it's going to help them, uh, definitely they're going to be more involved and it's very interesting what it says on the first paragraph i mean uh, your ability to focus decreases with age and i believe that is true i mean it's not that you are not paying attention it's that you are there in the class but you are thinking in many other things right yeah. what you need to do tomorrow what do you need to I mean, many things, important and not important. So everybody looks at you that you are paying attention, but maybe you are in a different world. So for you to, to attract people and get the attention of, of what you're saying, definitely has to be a motivation there. Okay, before we move on, we're going to check the attendance, my friends, because it's nine already. Okay, so... Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Andrés Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Méndez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Okay. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. 
Zuleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Yes, teacher. Good. So let's move on with these techniques and exercises. Okay. So let's continue with the reading. Okay, so the next part utilizing uh, is for Jessica Gennari. Not possible. Erwin Lagos. Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, leave me a moment, please. I will lose the glasses. Of course, of course. Okay. Utilizing time effectively. Effectively, okay? Effectively. Effectively. When teaching adults, it is important to consider that adult learn is likely to match limited time for learning. Adults could be younger days, education on top of all time, a part-time jobs of caring for their families since the adult learning time is so prestigious, which will make the most out of lesson time to be strict with the time limits. Hey, what do you get on that one? Oops. I think that uh, when you have an adult, uh, if you don't have a, uh, the, uh, the, the, the agenda with the, with the form, the, with the form like uh, sequentially, maybe the adult will be bored. Yes, teacher. You have to use the time the most effectively when you have a, a chair, the information for the adults, because uh, the adults have many things in the mind, and um, if you don't get the attention, maybe the the adult will think other in your mind, not about that you will teach. For this one, you have to be effective and give the motivation when you explain or learning some information for the adult. Okay, very good. So yes, I mean, uh, as you say, uh, adults, we are very busy doing a lot of things, right? Sometimes we are doing two or three things at the same time. So we need to use the time effectively. You need to not to speak things that are not important, right? You need to go and, and actually do something good for them to get the attention. So very good. The next one says addressing goals. Uh, Roxana Asensio. Okay. <clears throat> addressing goals. One way to motivate average learner is to is to get to know their individual goals and address them where appropriate. Adults learner will all have different sets of learning preference and goals. If positive, is possible, sorry, is possible customize lesson content to fit your learners and take the time to learn their needs and goals. This will also help you relate the lesson content to your learners as you can pinpoint which content is relevant to their goals. Okay, what do you get on this one? Uh, well, it's important to try to understand why the other person is uh, taking a course, for example, maybe uh, an adults, some adults uh, take the course because they are working a uh, current in a in, in in the in a company in similar uh, activities or maybe uh, another person just spend time study and you know a different person is equal to different goals different needs so <laughs> it's important when you have a presenter, you take the time and try to understand why that person is taking a course or what, what that person want to learn more about that. And 
if you uh, maybe if you see a lot of um, interest in, in someone else, maybe you can uh, share more information, extra information with uh, that type of students. Okay, very good. So yeah, you you need to understand why, right? What do you want to achieve, as we said before? And uh, it's important, it's important to understand that one so you can reflect that one uh, in the level of knowledge that you are going to transmit and many other things related to that one. Next one is something very important, being flexible. Okay, that is for, let's see, Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. Being flexible. It's important to be as flexible as possible when teaching adults. Adult learners will have additional responsibilities and may already know teaching methods that work for them. Give the adult learners flexibility in terms of timing, perhaps they have to leave the learning environment early for other commitments. This also includes being flexible with work deadlines and late arrivals. Adult learners may have a preferred learning style or are aware of teaching methods that suit them best. Be flexible and allow them to implement methods that are linked with this preference and let them make decisions about their learning. Okay, what do you get on that one? Uh, it, it may be that we are uh, learning English uh, every night. Maybe it's a good example of that. Uh, you know, you, you, would you, I, I know we have all, we have to work every day. We are tired, but we try to, to learn uh, every day and maybe the different ways because, you know, uh, we have different maybe a, a time to to learn and uh, we we sometimes we know not are only doing the, the the class we are maybe doing something different or we have responsibilities when we get home or maybe when uh, we 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 don't have all the time we, we have to to organize our time and we have to, the, 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 to, to the others, we have to be flexible uh, with that. And that's it. Okay, very good. So yeah, I mean, you are very right. Here in the class, for example, we are kind of flexible. I tell you, if you are going to have dinner during the class, not a problem, right? Um, sometimes you're late. Uh, I tell you, well, connect yourself even when you are not able to participate. I know that some of you are working actually whenever you are in class. So yeah, I mean, it's important to be flexible, of course. Uh, and it's important for students also to try to do their best whenever it's possible as well. So, and uh, you need to mirror their needs. You need to mirror everything that is related to this one. Very good. So, how to teach uh, the learners. So the first two paragraphs are going to be for Jose Rivas. Not possible. Um, Dora Elizabeth. How to teach adult learners. There are a variety of setting where you may be tested with teaching adults. It could be in a college and an university based setting for corporate training or as a part of online course. By using the adult learning strategies, strategies we've outlined above, you can ensure that your teaching will be effective. Please continue. It's important to think about your learners' needs and goals when teaching. Always keep the adult learning theory in mind and don't forget what makes teaching adults different from teaching children. Keep learners involved in the teaching process and do as, and do as much as you can to keep them engaged. 
engaged. Uh, what do engaged. you get from this? Um, when when teach uh, adults, in maybe in, in college or university or uh, training or online course, uh, a teacher, the teacher uh, uh, think much think in the what what the adult did in when in what is is the goals or achieve it. Uh, the adult the uh, the learning in adult in adults is different than the children. Uh, uh, the, it's always uh, the teacher keep uh, involved in the in uh, an adult in the in the in the teaching. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is it. I mean, yeah, we need to uh, check the experience of their life, check what are they here for. I mean, uh, what they want to achieve. Things like that are going to be very good for us to understand. Um, and then that the training that you're going to provide is going to be successful. Actually, we're going to ch change to the other one. So other learning principles. And uh, well, let's skip that one and we're going to go uh, addict to the other one. So um, the first part, this one is going to be for uh, Suleyma Yvonne. Not possible. Um, Heidi. Sure, teacher. Okay. Uh, number one, right? Yes, yes, please. Adults have a higher sense of self-direction and motivation. Adult learners are much more self-directed by directed and motivated than young learners. Adults tend to learn because they want to or they see the direct benefit of learning rather than because they are told to or are expected to. However, just because adults have larger reservoir, how do you pronounce that word? Uh, yeah, that reservoir. is French. Uh, that is reservoir. Reservoir or motivation, it doesn't mean that they will learn just anything. Adults have to see the benefit, value, and purpose of learning. Learning programs should, should clearly demonstrate what the learner gains from their interaction or learners will be quick to disengage. Show the value of the content and learners will be much more likely to engage with it. Okay, and uh, how, what do you get on this part? Similar to what we were talking about, that adults, um, Adults, uh, since already they know what the benefit is that, that, that they're going to get with 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 what they're learning, uh, they they make this commitment with them. It, and um it different from 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 younger learners. They already uh, uh, know what the benefit is, and that's why they 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 put all the effort, the necessary effort. Okay, that is it. So that is something very important. So, and uh, this is the continuation. That is how can you use this in your training? Okay, so let's check that one. It's going to be for Marcus. Okay, how you can use this in your training? You can follow the principles of self-direct learning theory and allow your employees to write their own learning journey. Employees can be encouraged to identify their own learning needs, plot how to achieve their goals, find resources, 
then access their own progress. Online learning is an ideal environment for this type of learning and gives employees the ability to follow flexible learning paths. Access to service that curate and recommend learning content to prevent skill gap and AI that is developed to deliver content tailored for each individual need. Tips for using this principle. Use learning outcomes to demonstrate the value and benefit of learning material. Curate learning paths that are tailored to your company to better serve learning. Uh, may accessing knowledge simple to help employees get started. Okay, what do you get in this part? Okay. Uh, um I understand that in order to to access in or go to train the employees. Uh, we have we can use a lot of, of tools and um, for example um online environment can help us a lot to achieve our goal and uh, also the flexibility of learning to the employees is something good but also it's important to identify the, the lacking on the skill and try to to um, like tailor a, a, a training to cover that skills. Um, and also um, in our company, in the company it's important to, to make a, a training, a, a specific training. And, and also we have to, that training like uh, make a, a, a a document or, or something that uh, we can use uh, every time we we want or if uh, other person wants to deliver that training that knowledge has to be uh, accessible for anyone um, also it's important to to set goals in our training uh, so the employees can get something uh, at the end of the training and, and learn from the from the training from the material and apply it in, apply it into the process of the company. Okay, yeah, as we said before, uh, yeah, experience is something very important for adults, right? That is something that we discussed already. The other two bullet points are kind of interesting. I mean, you need to tailor this according to the needs on the company, on the employee, or on the people that are going to be there. Um, I mean, a topic can be presented in many ways, but you need to think about what kind of audience is the one that you're going to get, of course, and keep it simple. I truly believe this is very important. So not to get too complicated or to try to do something that is kind of too large or anything like that. So they uh, really understand that one. Good. Uh, adults use their life experience to facilitate learning. That is something that we already discussed, but we're going to check about this one. How can you use this in your training? So that is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. How can you use this in your training? Let me just move this one moment, please. Okay. Okay. You can take advantage of this learning principle using social learning theory. This theory states that learners will combine their own experience and observations to gain a more full understanding of concepts. Training provided, uh, training provided through an online learning platform can deliver personalized learning materials based on an individual's previous experience using 
uh, artificial intelligence algorithms. Okay. Uh, do I read the other, the one for tips? Uh, yeah, please. Okay. Tips for using this principle. Provide bias training. Bias? Yes. Ah, okay. Bias training to help learner understand how to acquire new information that might be at odds with their previous experience. Develop training materials that draw heavily on scenarios that learners will face in their day-to-day -day roles. Okay, what do you get on this one? I feel reflected like the learning we're having here in Inglés Corporativo. <laughs> <laughs> I see it like in a mirror. What we do is uh, we have a platform and also use the, well, the artificial intelligence. I don't know in this point. No, we don't use it. No, as, far no. as, I, <laughs> <laughs> as far as I understand it. Uh, algorithm, no, we don't use it that. But that helps a lot because it's like... Um, depending on the what the program we are using knows about our predictions uh, can be used uh, the artificial intelligence to provide us or guide us through a better way for understanding something like the social kind of the social media does yeah. that based on the they track our, all our clicks, all the places, the comments, everything we do, everything is struck on is tracking and, and, and they make like a picture of the uh, of the um, let's say like the, the they can they draw like the highway we are going to, taking our life depending in which step we select it's something like that as far as i understand it okay very good so yeah i mean artificial intelligence or any other machine learning might be if it's possible to take that one of course um we can take advantage um it's not that common but yeah it's possible and uh, yeah we need to uh to provide i mean Sometimes there are some things that you know that people know, I mean, because of mm -hmm. their experience, because of their level or the position or the department or the company they work for. Uh, but if that is the case, you need to provide experiences that are beyond that one. So mm -hmm. that's going to help them actually analyze things in a different way. And actually uh, the scenarios uh, that they will be able to use in a daily basis. In, in their jobs or in their lives. So that is also going to help them a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, here, I think the most important is the observation because yeah, that is what we do. I guess all of us, all people, we observe and we make our own, uh, I forgot this word, uh, ah, conclusions <laughs> yeah. and based on that we do the next step mm -hmm. okay yeah that is that is true i mean yeah we need to mirror that one into the people that we have uh, in charge on the training so it's going to be successful mm -hmm. good number three is about achieving goals also we discussed that one but what is interesting is how can you use this in your training let's see uh, roxana sensio Not okay. possible. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, how can you use this in your training? With project-based learning, you can take advantage of the of this need to reach goals. Giving a group of learners a reconnaissance, reconnaissable. Is correct? Re recognizable. Reconnex recognizable. Achieve achievable goal. Achie achievable. Is, achievable 
go in the form of a problem that they must solve. You will be able to encourage the development to know of knowledge, skills, and teamwork. This can be done in many formats, but an increasing number of organizations are training to gramification in online training to encourage project-based learning. Learners are motivated to encourage with leather broads, leather broads, weekly goals and other ongoing challenge. <laughs> other organizations use learning paths, which are made up of various stage. It will a goal that the learner must, must meet and an evaluation that must occur before the learner can progress the next state, stage. These tips for using this principle. Teach learners the smart metal of gold setting. <laughs> Ensure that the information provided is relevant to the learner's current role and work-related challenge. Clearly show the value of the, firm, of the information when a learner can instantly see this. They will apply it to real life problems instantly and they will learn faster. Good, what do you get on that one? Um, let me see. Well, in general, uh, when adults are trying to uh, learn something, it's important um, maybe um, looking for a um, let me see. Um, I imagine that the presenter needs to adapt the information in easy way, maybe uh, for for the audience. Because uh, imagine when, uh, for example, in this course, we have. Uh, different age and different professions and something like that. So it's important to try to adapt that information for uh, the audience. So you can't uh, personalize uh, a topic uh, for maybe for a specific company or a specific uh, situation for one of, of the audience. So uh, it's important to try to uh, work uh, maybe in a smart form to, or in general, maybe uh, to try to transmit the information in the um, correct form and it's important also uh, give relevant information because uh, imagine uh, we are in advanced level, but uh, if now we are practicing, um, I don't know, maybe um, numbers or, or I don't know, easy topic, Maybe it's not a relevant information for us right now. So it's important when you are giving a course or when you are receiving a course, try to uh, provide a, what? The relevant, sorry, re relevant information. To, uh, the thing is that uh, when 
um, a person uh, receive a curse, they try to in increase the knowledge. And that's why it's important to provide uh, relevant information. And also uh, it's important try to uh, mm, try to be um, constantly with, um, for example, with, with some tasks, with some activities, with uh, uh, check the goals, because uh, if you lost the interest in, in a specific time, uh, you, you, spend, you are spending your time. So it's important try to uh, be, try to stay clear and try to um, not only spend time, uh, mm, well, when adults are uh, asking or looking for a curse, uh, the thing is that maybe they have a, 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 a goal and it's important to try to be focused on that. Okay, very good. So yes, I mean, the first one is something that we already know about the SMART method. Uh, and it's a good thing to implement that one. Also, um, as you said, relevant information. So depending on what is their role in the company and what are their tasks. And the last one, of course, uh, try to, present things that they really are going to use. So they will be able to adapt that one to their real life in their personal or in their job uh, situation so they can continue that one. So number four says adults need to know how the information is relevant. And we're gonna read only uh, as usual, how can you use this in your training? Uh, Jarvin Isaac. Not possible. Okay, let's see. Me sure. I'll go ahead, please, Francisco. Good. Okay. Uh, the principal of anthropology and dragogy. Pogogy. And dragogy. <laughs> Sorry, teacher. Yeah, no worries. Will work well in this case using anthropology. A uh, learning environment can be developed to provide learners with the relevant information needed for their learning path. Taking advantage of tools such as courses, videos, or apps. All of these tools demonstrate the relevance and need for the information contained in the learning activity using real world example an exercise to develop. Understanding the learning environment can be tailored for each person, providing materials related to their role in the department. Uh, continue to show. Yes, please. Okay, this for using this principle. For all types of learning content, demonstrate both short and long-term benefit to learners provide many types of content, allowing learners to engage with the type they feel most relevant for them. Related material to each role by tailoring the learning path. Okay, what do you get on that one? Uh, I, I, I agree with a part of uh, because uh, I think uh, for the adult people, uh, they value uh, the time, the time to invest for for uh, for uh, uh, the time for invest in, in training, and so uh, if the training uh, give a uh, specific information for ad for uh, another is better because uh, they uh, take advantage. Uh, for for time, and, and and they feel 
the the training uh, is uh, is a uh, um, a very a very specific information for for his his role. I think that. Okay, very good. So uh, this is very important. I mean, uh, yeah, we need to to provide not only in the short term, but also in the long term, the benefits of any task that we are teaching, right? Of course, provide many types of content. That's why sometimes we need to read, we need to watch videos, we need to ask questions, we need to deliver or uh, to ask for homework so they can present. Things like that are going to help people to, to get what is relevant for them. And uh, relate the materials to each role. That is also very important. So of course that is when it's a specialized thing, but uh, anyways, it's going to be very important for this one. Next one is a very, very good one. Adults are practical. They need to practice what they have learned, right? So hey, can you use this training? This is for Juan Miguel Brand. Not possible. Fernando Gonzalez. Okay, teacher. How can you use you use this in your training? This concept works well with experiential learning, a learning theory that prides hands-on learning in the use of experience to ensure that knowledge is gained in a complete fashion. An organization can create learning experiences centered on the knowledge that they wish learners to gain in a variety of manner. VR training is fast gaining popularity in this area as it can be much cheaper to develop experiential learning through VR than setting up real world simulation. Some companies prefer to develop role playing games that lead individuals through the multitude of decisions that they need to make in their role every day, showing the consequence if a bad decision is made. In any case, an organization and an organization should connect learning to real world application and give learners the opportunity to quickly apply new knowledge in their roles. Tips for using this principle. Focus on delivering knowledge that can quickly be applied in the learner's day-to-day -day role. Set aside time after knowledge acquisition for learners to practice their new skill. Hey, what do you get on this one? Uh, I understand that. Like an adult, we... We need to we need to see quickly the the benefit of the the benefit of the knowledge that we we gain uh, when we assess to a training uh, we expect that um, that that the training can it be you know, the training be um, information was or a skill or a improve of, of our skill uh, but we we need to we need to apply this knowledge uh, in a short period of time so um, I guess that companies um, must search uh, the for that people apply the, the knowledge that they impart in certain training because it's benefit for for both. And uh, well, that's it. It is the is the is the goal that the training, right? As acquiring or gaining ability or skill and applying for, for benefit, not only the company. For the employees too. That is true. I mean, I mean, this is one of the most important things, and definitely we need to. Whenever a training is delivered already, we need to check how they can apply this into real life. So, uh, it's one of the most important things. So they need to practice, right? They need to go and, and put that in into a production uh, in any of the roles that they are doing. Good. Adults are looking for help and mentorship. That is so true. I mean, 
you always can improve even if you are specialized, but sometimes we don't know how to do things and we really want to improve our job. So uh, definitely this is something that happens a lot. So how can you use this in your training? Let's check uh, Jose Wilfredo Ayala. Not possible, okay. Um, let's see. Erwin Lagos. Yes, teacher. Leave me a moment, please. Of course. Okay. How can you use this John training? Oops, John training. Leave me a moment, okay. The concept drops for social learning theory, the theory state that learning will grant information by combining the combining. experience combining with our experience with observers of the reverse and perceiving that others receive the other action and they and that they will even no imitate the behavior to those they request an organization and create a mentorship program in the person online by younger workers with more experiences role model online seminars and workshop and allow college and different office to share the visible and connect with each other. Uh, please continue with, yeah, with the tips, yeah. Okay, tips for using the principle. Develop ways to connect learning information with the organization. Set up seminars online in a person to provide learning opportunities across the department. Create a culture of learning and knowledge shared through the organization. Hey, what do you get on this one? Oops, let me a moment, teacher. And okay. um, I think when you have a, a training, you try to the, your audience with leave, okay, teacher, with leave that you will explain with your chair or try to learn the, the, the your audience. Because for me, if the one person like the the presentation or the information, the possible is they will live and will get feel that this is so important to change the life, the life and the mind. Because it's so important that you try to give the culture that the most important is if you have a most information in your mind, you will be a good person, a best person in the future. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, um, since we are looking for help, definitely the first one is going to be very important. Uh, many companies, they have problems of mentors. Uh, so you can look for somebody that knows a lot of things so you can develop yourself and then uh, learn the best way of doing something. Uh, when you also set up seminars online or in person, um, that is something very important that you can do some things across departments. Sometimes you don't understand how difficult it is for other people in other departments to sometimes do their jobs or, or maybe how your uh, tasks affect them in a way that, uh, I mean, if you don't know, uh, if you are able to be more, more productive or faster or something like that, it's going to be better for the whole company. So, and sharing through the organization is also important. Uh, some companies, they have a channel for them to, to uh, like share best practices and you can learn from, from your peers. So that, that is one of the best things that we can do in a company. Okay, so adults are open for modern ways of learning. Well, that depends as we learn uh, in the uh, about the generational thing, right? Some generations are more open than others. But anyways, uh, if we have to do something, of course, we can learn. So let's check into that one. Uh, David Samuel. 
okay, how can you use this learning training? An organization can use the theory of constructivism when developing training in this area. In, it's the theory, it is the theory that learners create their own meaning when learning, serving as the engine behind their own knowledge development by linking all information to new and then contextualizing it. By offering a variety of learning paths with different formats, a learner is able to acquire knowledge in a wide variety of manners and successfully contextualize it. Tips, tips for using this principle. The first one, be flexible about learning. It doesn't only happen in a classroom. Look for new ways to transmit information. Remember that people learn differently and provide many ways to access knowledge. Okay, what do you get on this one? Okay, it is important. The constructivism is uh, the, the main uh, approach that we are using in the new pedagogy this time. And, uh, link it with the uh, uh, competence. And uh, uh, all of the people need to, to connect the information or the new information with the information that they know, already know, and uh, apply to uh, the, the real situation. And the other thing is that the, they are, uh, they are learning, or we are learning uh, all the time. We are learning all the time. Sometimes we are, don't realize that we are learning, but uh, we learn in, in every situation, in every condition. And uh, uh, if uh, the trainer, the trainer or uh, instructor can use this to teach something, uh, sometimes in, in my case, uh, uh, teaching to uh, teenagers, I use the movies uh, depending on of, of the age. If they are older, uh, I use uh, some kind of, of, of movies. If they are younger, I use another kind of movies. Some, some scenes that I, I, I saw in the movie, and I, I talked to them about that, and oh, that, that I didn't realize that there, there is something that occurred in that movie, and, and they can learn from it. Uh, these are some examples about what uh, we can use a real life experience for, for teaching. And, and the other thing is that they, obviously some people can learn reading, uh, other people listening. We talk about that in previous session. Uh, the, there are some the, the learning by uh, action, by act, acting. Uh, Others are uh, reading, other listening, and we need to give information for all of the kind, for all kind of learners. It is important. Okay, so that is true. I mean, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people. I mean, different people. Everybody is different, and everybody learns in different ways. So we need to open our minds, right, to do different activities. Of course, you have like a methodology, everybody, I mean, we have our own way of delivery training, but then we have to open to this kind of different things that we can do. And also, uh, sometimes it's a good idea to go out of the classroom, right? Sometimes, I mean, it's not only there in the classroom that you are going to be learning sometimes by experiencing or just by walking outside or or do something that is totally different. It's going to open their mind and they are going to pay more attention. So that is a very good. That's, that's the way to check that the learning began in the 600 before Christ, uh, when uh, Socrates, when uh, Plato, when uh, Aristoteles, begin to to put the the foundations for uh, learning they founded a, a some uh, kind of institution that, that teach and uh, they try they teach to the pupils uh, walking around gardens uh, 
talking in the in the forties. That's the way that in the beginning start learning. They need to observe, to 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 look around, to look the 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 the, the tree, to look the bird, to look the air, and then they start learning and they make conclusion and then the, the teacher or the tutor give them some special advices about the, what they are learning. That, that's the way that the, the students or the, the training or the teaching began. And I think the best way. Okay. Yeah, that, that is something very good. I mean, because, uh, I mean, by walking or by doing something different, they are going to gain experiences. Uh, it's a very, very good experience, actually. We are able to do that when in a training. Okay, the last one says adults want to choose what they learn. So we discussed about uh, a little bit about this one before. And let's check what it says. How can you use this in your training? So this is going to be for Marcus. <clears throat> okay, how can you use this in your training? Action learning theory will be a good fit for this principle as it allows learners to have control over their learning process. Using action learning, a group of a person is asked to solve a problem while simplifying the solution. So a process of asking questions, reflection, and then action, learner will explore subject and gain knowledge through doing so. Once the process is complete, more reflection will allow learners to understand how they could do better next time. Um, tips for using this principle. Build training programs that give learners many options for engaging with information. Allow learners to set their own pace and goals and provide opportunities for them to give feedback about their experience. Okay, what do you get on this one? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, action learning theory. Uh, this principle uh, help people to to reflect, reflect, and while they are while they are asking questions and solving the problem, they simplify the solution. So. They, they explore uh, all the possibilities to solve a problem and also then they apply it. So they gain more knowledge uh, by doing, by doing something to, to solve the problem. And when the process is complete, um, they can reflect about how they, Speaks or solve the problem, and the next time they could be they could do it better. So, um, it's important to to, for example, like the teacher said, uh, build a training program so the the learners can be more engaged with information, and also the the learners um, um, they can have their own piece and goals so they because um, we know that when we teach a group of person all of them they are not in the same level so they are more fast or slow in gaining the, in the knowledge and the opportunity so it's important to give them a space so they can reflect about uh, the, the experience and the feedback so uh, at the end of the training they can all they can implement what they have learned okay very good so that is true i mean this is uh, 
involve people, not only in the training itself by asking questions or get them to participate, but also sometimes in the process of the planning of the trainings or things like that is going to motivate them, right? Because they they feel, they perceive that they are being listened and also they will be able to, to set goals together to uh, check what are the the achievements that they want to make or the needs that they want to to resolve so definitely this is something that is very very important as uh, sometimes it's not possible depending on the company and depending on some topics but whenever it's possible this is a good idea for us to check into that okay so this was the class for today so before we finish do you have any questions Okay, please remember that you will be receiving the INSA for survey this week. Do not do that one. We're going to do that uh, this incoming Monday. Also remember to finish the whole platform this Sunday. Sunday is the last day. So please move on on that one. And also um, remember that on Friday, you are going to provide a little training, okay? about anything new that you want to present, anything that you want to teach, to do, or to reflect um, for uh, everybody here on Friday. It's a, going to be a good day for, for us to check into that one. So then we're going to check the attendance. So Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. Andres Giovanni Valdivieso Portillo. David Samuel Galdames Monterosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher, get well soon. Ah, thank you very much. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Here, teacher. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Jessica Janari Cortez Diaz. I'm here. Good. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernandez. And Erwin Lagos Andrade. Good. So the one one of today is for Jessica Janari. And my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow. Be careful with the flu. And dream in English. Okay. Good night. Hey, Good night. Teacher, sorry that I um, uh, asked you for a, a couple of minutes, but of course, uh, you can help me with some exercise in the platform, please. Uh, yeah, definitely. Which ones? Uh, the three point one, the third one. Okay, three point one. Let me just move on to that one. Okay. Uh -huh. Aha, yes. there are too many places to visit before we leave. Period. So you say three point one, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, which number is that one? The conference. There are places. Yeah. Okay, uh, that is going to be, I have it here. There are too many places to visit in the period. To visit. To visit. 
uh, before we leave is not included in there. Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, before we leave, it's not included in there. Uh, no, it's not included. No, it's going to be just there are too many places to visit. Maybe there is an error on that one. Yes. Ah, so, okay, okay, okay. But if you enter yeah. like that with a period, it's going to take. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, also, I have a problem with the uh, 3.3 and the 5. Okay, so that one is going to be the package is too heavy to lift. To lift uh, okay. mm, by yourself, to live by yourself. But mm, let me just check something. Yeah, this has also an, an error. So it's to have it to live, period, and then by yourself, period. So, <laughs> okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me okay. let me know if you you are able to. Yeah, I had plenty of plenty of Okay, for good. <laughs> uh, I, I imagine that I have to put the same thing in the final version too, because there are uh, uh, some exercise. Seems I, to, uh, to, to do. Yeah, give it a try, and then uh, if uh, it's not working, I, I mean, that's why we need to finish before Monday. So on Monday, if there are questions, we can figure it out. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, perfect, teacher. That's all. Okay, perfect. Have a good night. So, see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Goodbye. Goodbye. Rest. Hello, Francisco. Do you have any questions? Sorry, teacher. No, 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 have questions. Ah, okay. I thought you have questions because you're still here. But okay, if you need anything, of course, it's a pleasure to help you. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Good night. Good night.